Let us go to doubly reinforced concrete beam, the design of it. Now let us review basic concept. If this is your beam section, With the entry of COVID, all schools and review centers were forced to stop their physical operation. All shifted to online. Different centers use different advertising tricks and gimmicks that cause more confusion in the minds of reviewers and students rather than help them. But in order to give you clear idea on what you will actually experience in our online review, we created this channel so that you will see, know, and experience firsthand how we do it online. But before we begin our discussion today, please don't forget to visit, like our FB page, Padilla Review Center. The link is found below. Please also subscribe in our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to click the notification bell. Choose all so that you will always be updated and notified regarding all our posts. Also, please don't hesitate and we will appreciate it if you will like every post that we will make. This is for all of you who are reviewing and students of math, science, and engineering, most especially civil engineering. So if you have problems or questions or topics that you want us to discuss, just send it to us through our contact numbers below. So let's begin. Let us go to doubly reinforced concrete beam, the design of it. Now let us review basic concept. If this is your beam section, this is your rebar, and this is our stress diagram. Let us say that this is the stress when this is the first time when your concrete reach its maximum strength or maximum stress which is the yield point, which is 0.85 FC prime. But as we said, concrete is weak in tension, strong in compression, yet it is brittle. So once it reaches its yield point, when you say brittle, once your element or material reach its yield point, the next thing that will happen is it will break. But however, if only the upper portion of concrete is under stress of 0.85 fc prime let us say we just consider this section if only the upper portion just a point of it is under yield point it will not break yet correct so if you will increase the load thus increasing your mu actual your mu actual is dependent upon the load and of course other things like length of the beam with increasing load is increasing mu actual now remember the one that will resist it is the mu resistance of the beam the resistance to the applied movement is the couple produced by this t coming from steel and the c of concrete so for simplicity, let us say that this is the neutral axis and this is the C at point of failure or at point where this reach its 0.85 FC prime. So take note that we can convert this. As you increase this, this will also increase. When your steel reach its yield point, it will not break because it is in contrast to concrete it is ductile not brittle even if it reach its yield point it will not break yet you follow so it means still can withstand the extra increasing mu but that extra will be resisted now by concrete 
So, concrete stress will begin to accommodate more 0.85 Fc prime. So, this shape will change, right? You follow? Until such time that sufficient depth is rich and sufficient depth of crack is rich. Remember that you don't have to break everything in order to break a brittle material. Just like glass. When certain length of crack in a glass is rich, the crack will continue all by itself. So same thing with concrete. Once you reach a certain sufficient depth, because of its brittleness, that crack will continue all by itself. Okay? So let us just call that that point where if we will convert this to a rectangular stress, let us call that the A maximum. Just for simplicity of understanding. So we have here a certain A and this is our T which is ASFY. Now remember by law of equilibrium, T for every four shear, it will always be countered by an opposite reaction coming from concrete. And that reaction, let us call it the normal force in concrete. And this is equal to 0.85 Fc prime multiplied by the area. If the beam is rectangular, so this is A by B. 0.85 Fc prime A by B or B by A. So force right equals force left, you have equal to NC. Your T is equal to AS FY, NC is 0.85 Fc prime B times A or A times B. All of this are constants. This is also constant. Now with increasing AS, Concrete will try to balance that by increasing its A. However, A cannot go on to infinity. The first one who will reach or which will reach its limit is the A. As I told you, once concrete reaches sufficient depth, then it will crack on its own. So we have a certain limit, A maximum, right? So when your A reach the maximum, NC will reach the maximum. Okay? And let us say that corresponding to NC max, corresponding to A max, is AS max. Then corresponding to AS max is T max for the singly reinforced beam. Let me call that T1, 1 for singly reinforced beam. So, going back to safety, in order to be safe, the MU actual due to applied load, this is due to applied load, must be less than or equal to the capacity. But let us say, we haven't reached our capacity yet. So the MU due to applied load will be equal to MU resistance. And the resisting moment is going to be the couple produced by NC and T. And T1. Okay? So we say that this is equal to phi times NC Z or phi times T times Z. N, C, and T are equal anyway. Or for rectangular beam, this is also equal to phi B, D squared F, C prime Q or W multiplied by 1 minus 0.59 of Q or W. Your Q being our rho FY over FC prime. 
Okay? So, these are expressions for moment resistance. And the maximum value of this is called the capacity. With increasing load, is increasing MU actual. In order to be safe, the resistance must react. Our T must increase. Our NC must increase. They are anyway equal. So, that T is increasing with increase in AS. That triggers or that cause increasing increase in A. However, we see that our A has a limit. This will reach its A first. Once A reach its maximum, even you increase your AS, there is no additional strength. Because the one that will govern the design is this one. Right? So this is equal to phi NC is 0.85 FC prime B times A times A. While this one is equal to phi times T AS FY times Z. So as we increase our AS, that cause increase in T. And increase in AS increase causes increase in A, which cause increase in NC. Right? Or since our Q is equal to rho FY over FC prime, rho being AS over BD with increasing AS is increasing rho is increasing Q is increasing MN and increasing moment capacity. You get it? So, sabay-sabay, kabit-kabit yung rho, yung AS, yung A, yung T, yung NC. However, as we said, concrete cannot increase the A for infinity. There is an optimum point, the maximum. Once you reach the maximum, we reach the maximum value for this. Now, when this is A max, NC is max, I repeat, no matter how you increase this, it is already nonsense because NC will govern the design. You follow? So, let us call when A is max corresponding to AS max corresponding to Rho max let us call this the M1 max the maximum M1 the maximum moment that a single reinforced concrete can handle but our problem is it's okay if MN or if MU due to the actual load is less than the MU maximum due to singly reinforced beam or due to the section. However, the problem is when this exceeds this one. As I said, no matter how you increase your steel anymore, then concrete cannot balance it because concrete cannot balance it, then the additional, the extra steel will be nonsense or will be useless. Okay? Because concrete, just the same, will declare or will dictate the design. So, any additional AS additional or extra above AS max, AS additional over AS max or excess over AS max will be nonsense. For this to be useful, there must be a material that will counter it. You get it? So, to produce that material, we use the, what we so-called, compression rebar. 
the compression rebar, this one, will produce here a force. This force, let me call N prime. So let us say that that area is A S prime times Fy if compression bar yields. So that A S prime is the area of rebar that will counter this A S additional. So this A S additional must be A S prime also. So that take note this and this produces another couple. Let us say that this is Z. If this is D and this is D prime, then this must be the Z for the compression rebar, let us call Z prime, is D minus D prime. So, it will produce another couple. The other couple is N prime times Z. You get it? So, there are two couples that are produced. One is NC times Z of concrete, this one. The other is N prime times Z prime. So, therefore, this one will shoulder the excess of this over this one. So, that our MU actual will be balanced by MU1 maximum plus MU due to this one. So that is MU prime. Okay? This is MU1. So MU prime. So this one is what? This is also equal to this. Our M1, MU1 is phi BD squared FC prime Q 1 minus 0 0.59 of Q. Q being here because this is MU1 maximum. This is equal to what? It is rho maximum times FY over FC prime. Okay? So, your MU prime is phi times N prime Z. N prime Z. And N prime is AS prime times FY times Z, the moment arm. D minus D prime. You follow? We just have to follow certain code provision. Okay? You follow? Okay, so the code provision as I had, as I had uh, explained, using the Padilla's row, row minus row prime chart. I discussed this more in detail in uh, our mastery course in reinforced concrete design. If you want to learn more, enroll in that program. Okay. So, this is row limiting, this is row maximum, and this is the row minus row prime. Row is AS total over BD, row prime is AS prime over BD. Row minus row prime must be between row limiting and row maximum. If it is more than row max, and we are designing, we will not allow our row minus row prime exceeds, exceed row max because NSCP doesn't allow it. So this is a region when row minus row prime is more than this, this is not allowed. Now the allowed is this region and this region. Okay? But in as much as we are designing, this region is an economical zone. So, this is the economical zone. So, when your row minus row prime is between row limiting and row maximum, we are sure that, that our tension steel and compression steel yields. Even you don't check it, it will yield. Both of them will yield. You get it? You get it? Let us have an example. So, let us have this example. 
We're asked here to design the reinforcement, meaning we are just asked to find AS and if needed, AS prime for this beam to resist an ultimate moment of 600 kilonewton meter given that B by D is 250 by 500, D prime is 70 or if a secondary reinforcement or compression reinforcement rather is provided or is needed then D prime will be 70 mm. FC prime is 35, FY is 400 megapascal. So let us do it. Now since FC prime is greater than 28, our beta will not be just 0.85 because we know that beta is equal to 0.85 minus 0.05 over 7 times FC prime minus 28 and the value must be greater than 0.65 so substituting FC prime is 35 35 minus 28 is 7 over 7 1 so 0.85 minus 0 0.05 so this is equal to 0.8 and this value is greater than 0 0.65 so this is okay so that is our beta now let us check whether this can be handled, this moment can be handled by a singly reinforced beam. So let us solve our raw max. The maximum raw that we can use allowed by the code is raw max. And our raw max is 0.75 raw balance. Raw balance is the ratio of yield stress of concrete 0.85 FC prime over FY times beta 600 over 600 plus FY. So our FY is 400. Our FC prime is 35. Beta is 0.8. We substitute. So this is going to be 0 0.75 times 0 0.85. FC prime is 35. FY is 400, beta is 0 0.8, 600 over 600 plus 400, 1000. So 600 over 600 plus 400. So this is going to be 26.775 times 10 to the minus 3. Now if you want the maximum moment, that can be carried by a singly reinforced concrete beam, then use this as your row. So let's do that. Our MU max for a singly reinforced beam, let me use the subscript 1, using the phi BD squared FC prime times Q 1 minus 0 0.59 of Q. Q being rho FY over FC prime. So this is going to be 26.775 times 10 to the minus 3. FY is 400 and our FC prime is 35. So computing this you'll have 0 0.30 6 okay 0 0.306 you substitute that here you'll get phi is 0 0.9 b is 250 d is 500 squared fc prime 35 q 0 0.306 1 minus 0 0.59 of 0 0.306 you calculate this value what you will have will be 493.674 6734 kilonewton meter the maximum moment that the beam can carry as a singly reinforced concrete beam is 493 but the moment caused by the load is 600. So the moment caused by the load is greater than the maximum 
that this beam can carry. And we know that this is the maximum that concrete can have. This is already a maximum for this moment capacity. So what we are going to do is we will use a compression reinforcement. And by the way, as we said, that this moment is the moment cost by this couple T for a singly reinforced beam T1 max and NC max. NC max corresponds to A max. So this couple is going to be equal to this moment also times 0.9. You get it? You follow? So what we're going to do is this AS1 corresponding to rho max must be increased by an additional bar. Let me call it AS2 or that is the same as AS prime. This and this are equal. Okay? So this is AS of the secondary bar. This is the same as AS prime. So this one and this one will produce a pair of couple. Let me call this T2. And for this, let me call this N prime. N prime and T2 are equal. So this is equal to area of compression bar times stress in compression bar. Let me assume it to yield. So that is Fy. So the discrepancy of this moment and this moment will be taken by the couple of N prime and T2. Take note that their moment arm is D minus D prime. This is 500 and this is 70. So if this is 70, so this is D minus D prime. 500 minus 70, this is 430. So we need here our A S prime. Meanwhile, let me solve first A S 1. The area corresponding to AS max. So AS1 is AS max. The area corresponding to rho max. So this is AS max for a single reinforced beam. And this is equal to rho max times BD. So this is 26. 0.775 times 10 to the minus 3 times 250 times 500. So this is going to be equal to 3346.875 millimeter squared. So this is your AS1. So let me solve here A S prime. So we see that in order for the beam to be safe in flexure, our MU actual due to the applied load must be less than the resistance or the capacity. Our resistance is the moment cost by NC max and T1 max. So this is actually MU1 max. Plus, since this is less than this, we create an extra couple or moment to resist the excess MU. And that is N prime times D minus D prime. So, plus, since this is ultimate, we will use again phi here for this portion. This is N prime times D minus D prime. Okay? So, substituting the values, this is 600, while this is 
equal to 493.6734. Take note that both of these are in kilonewton meter or times 10 to the 6 newton millimeters. So plus phi, our phi is 0.9. N prime is AS prime FY. So AS prime FY is 400. D minus D prime is equal to 430. So this is newton millimeter. Kilonewton meter is 10 to the 6 newton millimeter, right? Okay? So, newton millimeter, just divide it by 10 to the 6, this will be in kilonewton meter. One equation in terms of AS prime. So, you solve that, you'll be able to get your AS prime. Our AS prime is going to be equal to, if you solve this, you'll get 684.76. Before we finalize the result, let us solve, let us check our assumptions that still yields and compression still yields. So, why did I say that we make that assumption? Because N prime is AS prime times FY. We use FY, meaning we assume that compression still yields. So let us check that. How do we check that? There are many ways to check that, but that is the very purpose of row limiting. In the Padilla's row minus row prime chart, this is the value of row minus row prime. We said that if this is a row limiting and this is a row max, take note that if your section is in this region, your tension still and your compression still yields. And this one is not allowed by the code. Okay? If you are in this region left of row limiting, then it means that your compression still doesn't yield. Okay? So let's have that. Solving a row and row prime, our AS total is AS1 max plus AS prime. So I have here 3346.875 plus AS prime 684.76. You compute this. This is going to be 4031.6. And solving our row, row is AS over BD. It's 4031.6 over 250 by 500. Your row here is going to be 32.25 times 10 to the minus 3. While our row prime, while our row prime is equal to AS prime over BD, my e, our AS prime is 684.76 over BD 250 by 500. And this is going to be equal to 5.47 times 10 to the minus 3. So solving our row minus row prime, this is 32.25 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 5.47 times 10 to the minus 3. So this is going to be equal to, if you solve this, you'll get here 26. 77 times 10 to the minus 3. Notice that this is exactly equal to rho max. You follow? We are in the borderline. Let us verify our rho limiting. Our rho limiting is given by 
it's almost the same as row balance except that this is minus times d prime over d. So, in our mastery course for concrete design, we discussed why this is so. Okay? Alright. So, row limiting is 0.85 Fc prime over Fy times beta times 600 over 600 minus Fy d prime over d. So, computing this, this is 0.85 Fc prime 35 Fy 400 beta is 0.8 600 over 600 minus 400, you have here 200, D prime is 70, D is 500. You calculate this, our row limiting is going to be equal to 25 times 10 to the minus 3. So, our row limiting is 25 times 10 to the minus 3. Row max is 26.77. Row minus row prime is 26.77. This value is greater than this. So, we are on the right. On the right of row limiting. Meaning, our compression still yields. So, row minus row prime is exactly equal to this. So, it means our tension still yields. You follow? So, all our assumptions so far are justified. So, therefore, our AS for tension is the total tensile bar AS1 plus AS2 or AS prime, which is 4031.6 millimeter squared, while our AS prime is equal to 600 84.76 millimeter squared. Please support this channel by subscribing to this channel and sharing it to your friends and to everyone whom you know can be helped by this channel. So, see you.